just feel like this goes on and on and on. For decades now, we have been talking about Islamic extremism. We've had two big terrorist attacks on our soil, Manchester, of course, and 7-7 in London. Got a school teacher in hiding in Batley. Uh, I mean, I, the list really does go on and on, and nothing seems to be an inflection point where something's actually done about this. And the people who uh, arguably suffer the most at the end of the day is the Jewish community. I mean, we need to get beyond talking and start getting into doing, surely. Yes. Well, firstly, thank you for having me on. But I think we need to separate out the different elements to this. One is there is a problem of abuse of members of parliament, right? We, the all-party parliamentary group uh, against anti-Semitism, to which we provide the secretariat, did an inquiry into this about 10 years ago, which showed, if you look at Una King, who was standing uh, in the east end of London, uh, Palmjit Danda, who had been in the south of England. If you look at those various uh, MPs, they had received abuse over time. Uh, even further back, there are examples of MPs being abused. That is a problem. That comes from a particular discourse in our politics, in our public life, a discourse which needs to be moderated. Um, and we need to have protections for those MPs in place. Andrew Percy, Charlotte Nichols, Jewish MPs who have specifically talked about the anti-Semitic abuse they've faced. You then have the issue of Islamist extremism, not Muslims or Islam, but Islamist extremism. We've just seen the banning of the group Hizbut Tahrir. Um, um, and it's right and proper that those groups that are uh, extreme and that radicalize should be banned. And then that ban has to be properly enforced. And as regards anti-Semitism, you're right, it's on the rise. We need to see action against it. There must be proper policing in place um, and appropriate funding of com Jewish communal security. But that also relies on a particular discourse in public life that is not radical, that is more moderate, um, and that does not see those anti-Semitic tropes being used. So a whole series of issues that need to be dealt with. Um... I live up uh, near where Mike Freer's uh, constituency is, and what uh, f infuriates uh, me about this, Danny, is that these people who are being targeted uh, by uh, religious extremists uh, are Jewish people. Uh, Jewish people, just uh, for your information, I know I don't have to tell you this, uh, but these people are British citizens. They've lived here all their life. They're my, they're my damn neighbours. I know these people. Uh, it is a disgrace that uh, people are allowed to uh, target these people. Only a couple of days ago, some guy with a knife attacked a Jewish grocery uh, in Temple yeah. Fortune near Golders Green. Uh, and now we've just really found out about this ordeal that Mike Freer has been going through ever since he became the MP for that area, targeted by Muslim extremists time and time again. What can we do to go to these extremists, to go to maybe mus Muslim non-extremists and say, look, you know, this is not on. You cannot do this. I mean, we surely need more of a robust response to the way these people are treated. It, it, the Muslim community are no more responsible for Islamist extremists than the Jewish community is for any individual extremist out there. I think it's a it's a shared responsibility. It's a British responsibility to tackle extremism. I think that there are probably enhanced ways that we can do that. And it's always going to come down to education. That's where we start. Um, yes, I think there is a role for um, uh, Muslim leaders. We work very closely with an organization called Tell Mama, who are fantastic, um, uh, record anti-Muslim attacks and do educational programming. Um, but it's up to all of us to educate against extremism. And Mike Freer have been talking about the role of social media. There is a particular responsibility on social media companies to ensure that mis- and disinformation isn't being spread, that people aren't being radicalized by the way in which their algorithms are configured. And Ofcom, for example, our new regulator for online safety, has a role in and related to uh, digital citizenship and education. And it will be that kind of digital education that's going to be crucial in ensuring that our children know the right questions to ask and our children, whether they be Jewish, Muslim, or a uh, non-practicing non secular, um, that they know the right questions to ask about the content that they're consuming online so that they don't fall down those uh, rabbit holes and track down extremist lines um, towards radicalization. That is going to be a shared collective responsibility of ours and we need better ways of doing that. And part of it is our public discourse and is ensuring that the discourse that we have in our politics is a more calm, tolerant, kinder um, discourse because we don't have that at the moment.
Isn't that down to schools? Shouldn't schools be teaching kids that it's possible to disagree with someone, it's possible to have a different opinion to someone else without resorting to stabbing them or some sort of violent response? That seems to be a big problem. Kids come out of school with no concept of civilised debate. It is, you know, you don't agree with me, I'm going to kill you. That, I think, is augmented by the horror of social media. Uh, but schools must do more, I think, to teach kids the beauty, the, the joy of civilised debate. Absolutely. There was discussion about PSHE in Parliament the other day, you know, uh, personal social health and economic education, and the role that that might play, for example. Um, there definitely needs to be a better understanding of how to disagree well, a place that you can go and have fierce debates and then walk away feeling unmolested. Um, I mean, we, you have it on your t on your show, right? You have people who fiercely disagree. You said things about about uh, uh, Harry and Meghan. People will no doubt disagree. You can have that debate, and you can have extremely strong views on on what you're saying, and yet still be able to disagree well. And in Parliament, in particular, I think we've begun to lose that skill somewhat. Um, certainly, uh, I mentioned an MP who's been talking about the conflict since the 7th of October in the Middle East, who is very keen that there be recognition that Hamas attacked uh, Israelis and that there are, uh, is some recognition that hostages are still being held and that MP was attacked for suggesting that. That is a problem. You know, one shouldn't be attacked for expressing those views. It's more about how to understand them and incorporate them into one's thinking and be able to share that disagreement and disagree well and we are losing that skill to disagree well and yes there is a I wouldn't say their views I'd say their facts and